Hey, what's up guys? Wolfcore here, and welcome back to episode 2 of Dream Daddy. I want to apologize on the delay between episodes. I got sick after going to a music festival last weekend, so that kind of slowed me down a little bit last week, but we are back in. I'm back to 100%, and I can't wait to play some more Dream Daddy with you guys. So let's just jump right into the game. All right, so where did we leave off? I think we just met a guy. I want to say his name was Brian. Uh, he's the first Dream Daddy. Ooh la la. Uh, we met him in the park, and uh, we're just going to go from here. So let's see what's going on. Uh, what's up, Amanda? So she wants to go take a nap. Sure, let's do that. All the sunlight is making me real tired. I don't think I got enough sleep last night. You slept for 14 hours. <laughs> Just like me. Exactly. As we're walking home... Oops! I hear heavy footsteps come up behind us. Sorry. <laughs> Wolf bro! bro! I turn around and I'm greeted by a familiar face jogging up to us. Oh, hi. Craig? Oh. Bro. Bro. Hmm. Holy wow. I haven't seen Craig uh -huh. in forever. It's been too long, dude. Yeah, wow. You look great. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act. Way to go. Cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped. Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. <laughs> Amanda, dude, you probably don't remember me, but you're so hey. big now. Hello. And hello, cute baby. Hmm? Aw, thank you. The last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. Wow, that has been a while. This is River. Say hi, River. Oh, River. That reminds me of Firefly. I love that name. He picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. River gurgles happily. Are you babysitting? Oh. Nah, dude, River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we were rolling up to exams with bat hangovers and the next we're both fathers. Where you been, man? Hmm. I was working out in California and just relocated the business back to Maple Bay. Yeah, California. No kidding, Amanda and I just moved to this side of town. How's Smashly doing? Oh. I mean, Ashley. Ashley is her name. Oh. She's actually, she actually still goes by Smashly and uh, we got divorced last year. Oh, that sucks, bro. Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. Hmm. It's old news, we take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all copacetic. Twins? You have three kids? Mm -hmm. Ain't life something, bro, right? Dude, I feel it. Bro. Cake Stan Craig is a father of three. Mm. Cake Stan Craig? Oh, oh haha, yeah, it was my old college nickname. Badass. He got it because he did a lot of keg stands. Nice. <laughs> is that the thing where you do a handstand on a keg and then drink from the keg? Right. He was very good at it. Mm. Ah, oh, bro. I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily jog, and I really got to keep up my heart rate. Brought River along for, you know, resistance training. <laughs> you jog daily? I jog yearly. On January 1st, when I promised myself that I'm going... that I'm gonna jog daily for the rest of the year, but give up after 30 minutes and just walk home. Mm -hmm. Well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should join me sometime. I'm down. I'm down. Haha. <laughs> I don't know. Hey! Come on, it'd be fun. We could grab some breakfast afterwards, catch up. We could do a bro brunch like the good old days. All right, sure. Sounds great. Mm. Great. Let's get that going soon. I better get moving. Good to see you guys. You too. Craig gives a little wave, puts his earbuds back in, and jogs off. I can't believe Craig is ripped and has a kid. I'm mm. reeling. Why is that? The Craig I knew is not fit to be responsible for any living thing, including and especially himself. One time I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> Amanda, he opened up a new jar of marinara sauce and then he drank it like it was that thing, like it was a thing that normal people do. It was unholy. And then I asked him what in the hell he was doing and he said, and I quote, it's basically a smoothie, bro. Pizza smoothie. I mean, technically he's not wrong. He jogs, he was jogging. Oh. He's like a totally different person. Anyway, we better get home. I'll have plenty of time to reflect on how old I feel later. There's always time for that. Amanda and I flop down onto the couch and Amanda has to shove some extra boxes out of the way before she can sit. Huh. Too bad we're gonna be putting my stuff right back in these boxes in a few months. Oh, what? Oh yeah, you're going to college. Oh. No, don't say that. Hmm. Oh, dad, it's gonna be okay. I'll be fine. No, but what about me? I know, I know. It's just, you're my little girl. It's gonna be weird not having you around. 
I'll come visit and I'll text you every day and I'll like and I'll take lots of pictures. I mean, obviously, I'm a photographer, a photography major. You promise? Yeah. Of course. Are you gonna be okay by your lonesome? Oh, come on. I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. Yeah. Ooh, yes, a dog. A yeah. dog. Forget art school. I'll stay for the dog. <laughs> Is that what it's gonna take? Yeah. Medium-sized dog, handkerchief around the neck. I get the name. I get to name it. That's what I'll, it'll cost for me to give up on my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. Well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. <laughs> Amanda laughs. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, a pile of envelope envelopes slide through the mail slot. Speaking of college, ah. Amanda darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls out. Uh, she pulls one out and throws the rest back on the yes. floor. This is from McGowan College of Art and Design. Open it. Huh? But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like my entire future, not a big deal. She takes a deep breath and rips the letter open with her teeth. We have a letter opener, but okay. Mm -hmm. I hold my breath while Amanda, Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, the admissions committee has reviewed your application, blah, blah, blah. Um, we, mm -hmm. her face drops. Oh. Regret to inform you that we are unable to offer you admission to McGowan College of Art and Design. Mm. Aww. Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. I'm sorry. Oh, sweetie. Uh. It's okay. I kind of saw it coming. I knew I shouldn't have put that experimental stuff in my portfolio. Their admissions officer told me they just wanted to see my portraits or whatever. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much you work, how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up huh? for sure. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Are you actually fine, or are you just mm -hmm. saying that? I'm fine, really. Her face says the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on this. Mm. Oh, and before I forget, Emma R and Emma P are sleeping over tonight. Oh, jeez. So... You need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool? <laughs> I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes. Well, I'll have you know that I conventionally conveniently already have plans for tonight so you, you'll have the new place all to yourself yeah what are you plans quick think of plans um, um i'm going clubbing no not not me gotta attend the union meeting Ooh, sounds boring as shit i'm secretly the mayor of this town obviously amanda the town needs me i need to perform my mayoral duties I must don my top hat, oh, top hat, yes, he gets me, and wear my monocle so that I may preside over my mayor stuff. <laughs> I think you're thinking of the guy from Monopoly. What's the difference? He was a mayor, right? He was not. Right. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to stay home and finish unpacking, go to bed, go out and watch the game. Ooh, go out and watch the game. That sounds fun. Nice. Which game? Uh, the sports one? You know, the the game, the one that's on tonight. The the game on TV at at, at somewhere other than here. Eh? Okay, cool. While you do that, I'm going to do drugs and commit some light arson with the Emmas. That's my little girl. I'm concerned you're hanging with the wrong crowd. Amanda shrugs. I wouldn't exact I, blah, 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 blah. I wouldn't I would have expected you guys to be up to the white collar crime but by this point, maybe money laundering at the least. I'm a street rat pops. You're kidding about doing drugs and crime, right? Mm. Yes, Dad. Just making sure. I give her a pat on the head. Have fun with you. Have fun with your sports. Oh, I will. I'm gonna watch all the sports. Are you being sarcastic? Uh. No, making fun of sports is played out. Hmm. All right then. I do some light cleaning around the house and decide to clear out right before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda stops uh. me. Hey, don't forget that you have the meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Oh right. Mr. Vega. Yep, totally remembered. I'll be there. I hope they have a fun night. I'm really glad Amanda has such sweet friends, even if I can never remember their names. Emma P and Emma... Nope, can't remember. Just as I'm heading towards my room, the doorbell rings. Who could possibly need anything from me right now? Do they know what time it is? I was just about to head out. I walk over to the door and open it. Hello? Oh. A handsome, clean-cut man stands at... At my door, brandishing a plate of cookies. Well, hello. Hello, next dream daddy. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Hi. I know it's kind of late, but I've baked way too many cookies, and I can't have these in the house, or I'll eat them all. Bro, I get it. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm your next door neighbor. Well, hi, Joseph. Oh, yes, hi. I'm Wolf. That's what my name is. I saw the moving van and thought I'd do the neighborly thing and bring you some. My daughter, Christy, wanted me to let you know she baked them herself. Well, tell Christy thank you. Joseph leans in and whispers, but between you and me, she just sprinkled in the chocolate chips. We both share a laugh. Kids, right? Oh. Yeah. That's cute. Amanda pokes her head out of her room and, uh, and immediately hones in on the cookies. Wow, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. Well, thanks for the cookies. Amanda disappears with the cookies. Oh, she's... what a little tyke. Amanda, come back, and she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name is Amanda. She's a charmer. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Children in general are just... tough. You said it, buddy. You said it. I hear that. I mean, there'd have to be something wrong with you to try and raise more than two. <laughs> I have four kids. Jeez, that's way too many, bro. What have you done? <laughs> oh, uh, I meant... Don't worry, you didn't mean to be rude. <laughs> oh no, this is the first neighbor I've met and my social... Met and my social life is already in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. Uh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Is the missus around? Uh, mister, actually. And er... No. Not anymore. He died. Uh. Oh, a heroic fireman, ex-husband. Uh. I miss him. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm sorry for your loss. That's okay. No, no, it's all right. Wow, this is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly for a minute, actually aware of how awkward we both made things. Oh. I'm sorry, can you close the door real quick? <laughs> I look at Joseph quizzically, but comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door. Opening it, I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. Uh. Hey, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise to not talk about your dead spouse this time. I'm throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac. Cul-de-sac. And I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. What do you say, pal? Oh. That sounds great. My daughter Amanda and I would love to stop by. Also, four kids is perfectly normal amount of children to have. <laughs> we shake hands to seal the deal. Hey. Well, neighbor... I'll let you get to bed. See you at 3 p.m. on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. Joseph starts walking away, but stops to think for a second and turns around. Ugh. Hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to talk about stuff, I'm the youth minister at a church down the street. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. <laughs> you look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. And with that, Joseph's gone. He seemed nice. Amanda walks back into the living room, crumbs on her face and cookie in hand. That was the smoothest recovery I've ever seen. I should be taking notes. That was a pretty smooth recovery. Gotta give him points. Give credit where credit's due. See, you're already fitting in. Great. Where'd those cookies go? They're gone. I'm sorry. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. So you ate all of them anyway? <laughs> The Emma's helped. Right. Well, kiddo, I'm going to go catch that game. Have fun, Dad. Oh, I will. I will. Wow, I guess I really didn't think this plan through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone, so I'm just going to pick a direction and walk in it. Seems like a good plan. Let's go. This way. Cool. Okay. We're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance. Could it be? Oh, a bar. Jim and Kim's. A big, burned-out neon sign hangs over the, the tiny dive bar. Jim and Kim's, huh? All right, I'll do. It'll do. The bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of pool balls sounds in the back as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover over the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. I pull up a seat at the bar. What'll it be? One beer, please. Sure thing, boss. The bartender slides me an ice-cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh. <laughs> I awkwardly turn my attention to the game, which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, my team of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. Hell yeah. The brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite team, hoping that I don't get into any confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. 
Several people in this bar are wearing the distinctive colors of the team I dislike. Although, I believe from their demeanor that, like me, the passion for their team is all in good fun. Oh. A middle-aged woman holding up a nearly empty wine glass sidles up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Oh, dear. Hey, sailor. Oh, hello. Mm. Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often? No. Oh, no. I act... I actually just moved to this part of town today. I'm Wolf, by the way. Ah. Are you watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Ah. Oh, I love that team. And also, I love that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. <laughs> oh, I know my way around balls, don't you worry. <laughs> just ask my late husband. <laughs> I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Uh, mm -hmm. Buy a gala drink? Yeah, why not? I'm almost reluctantly, I almost reluctantly signal the bartender and order Mary another glass of wine. Neil jokes back and forth with Mary. They're clearly friends, and this clearly isn't her first time doing this. She tips her glass at me. Suppose I gotta keep you company hey. now. So, what do you want to know? Uh, what's your deal? What do you think of the game? What's the latest gossip around here? Let's find out what the latest gossip is. You came to the right broad. Mm. I'm an observer. I watch people. I see everything. Know everyone. Nothing gets past me. Hmm. So. Come on. So what? I thought you were gonna... Ah. I forget what we were talking about. About the gossip? You said nothing gets past you. Oh, right. I'm also a steel trap. Confidential to a fault. Respectable. So what else can you tell me about this part of town? Ah. It's quiet, that's for sure. If you want an idyllic life... An, an idyllic little life with white picket fences, this is the place to do it. But every every town has its secrets, you know. She takes a sip of her drink. That was a little too ominous for my taste. She leans closer. Hey. Would you like to learn some of my secrets? Uh, oh boy. Ah, maybe some other time? Suit yourself, sailor. <laughs> Mary saunters off, sending her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. Good luck, Mary. I happily watch the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points, a little too close, a little too close than what I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. Go team. He sits alone, brooding over a beer and keeping an eye on the game. Enjoying the game? I am now that we're winning. Oh no, he plays for the other team. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. I have to disagree with that. Based, up, based upon our win-loss record, I'd say that my team is superior. That's where you're wrong, since as, I sta as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends there, and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, with both sides playing their hardest to win. But in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple through the bar. I raise a respectful glass at the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response. An unspoken truce is formed between us based on mutual love for the game. He motions to the bartender who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. Why, well, thank you. The name's Robert. Hi, Robert. Thanks, I'm Wolf. You must be new here. Mary already hit on you? Yup. <laughs> Robert chuckles. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim or Kim that runs this place? Uh, nope. That'd be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. Hey. Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. Okay. You a whiskey fellow or a beer fellow? Beer. Beer. But I'll drink most things. You like shots? Not particularly. Uh, oh, shots fired. <laughs> oh, shots fired. I don't like them. Well, that's gonna be a problem. Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands once to me. Ooh, I don't want to. Here's to your health. We take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. Hey. Wait, I think this is what making friends is. Oh, okay. Wolf, this guy's out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Compliment his cool leather jacket. Compliment his rugged good looks. Compliment his hand tattoo. Oh, my, he does have a hand tattoo. A leather jacket? I like your jacket. Mm. Thanks. Been in my family a long time. Passed down firstborn to firstborn. Cursed, some would say. <laughs> Man, this guy is mysterious and cool. 
Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? Uh, my daughter kicked me out of the house, running for my problems, trying to make friends. Daughter kicked me out of the house. Not like forever. She was having a sleepover with her friends. Family type, huh? Single dad. Hmm. He gets up. I... Be right back. Got to powder my nose. <laughs> Does that mean he's doing cocaine in the bathroom? I hope not. Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. Ah, I guess so. I got to admit that Robert has a gruff charm to him. If a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. I'm going to go home. You heading my way? Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. So. I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. Does everybody live there? <laughs> Me too. We just finished unpacking yeah. today. Great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop, and he turns to me. I don't kiss and tell, Wolf. Oh, my. So are we doing this, or what? What? <laughs> you know, do you want to come inside or not? A wave of realization rushes over me, and I blush. Lay it on smooth, smile and nod. No, thank you. Oh, jeez. I mean, I'm guessing we've probably been lonely for a while. Let's, uh, let's lay it on smooth. Well... I don't see why not. <sighs> that sounded smoother in my head. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> oh, damn, that was easy. I follow him up to his door. He fumbles with his keys for a second and unlocks the door, leading me inside. The moment the door closes behind us, he pushes me up against the wall and kisses me, grabbing my hips. Oh, oh my. Come on. Robert takes my hand and leads me up the stairs and into what I assume is his bedroom, but it's so dark that I can't see anything but Robert's intense expression. He kisses me again, and I can hear him shucking off his jacket. I clumsily take off mine, too. His hands roam down my chest, and suddenly he's tugging at my belt. I, uh, I don't normally do this. <laughs> do you want to stop? No. No. Good. <laughs> Robert continues to unbuckle my belt and guides me to the bed. Let's have some fun. Well, damn! Well, damn! That got hot and heavy quick. Woo! Sunlight streams in between the slats of the blinds. My head is... Those are curtains, not blinds. That doesn't make sense. My head is pounding. I really overdid it last night. Wait a minute. This isn't my old house or my new house. Oh, shit. Oh, right. I look around for Robert, but find myself alone. Hello? There's a clatter from the bathroom and the door opens. Robert is fully dressed and grabs his keys. That was fun. Yeah, it was. Huh. You should go. Damn, that's certainly not what I was expecting. Well, uh, talk to you later? Mm. Robert cracks a smile. Sure. Your clothes are over there. Hey. I hastily get dressed and show myself out. The sun is unbearably bright. I need to lie down. I start to make my way back home when I suddenly remember... Amanda! <laughs> oh, God. Right, we have a daughter. Ooh, we got an achievement unlocked. Bad dad. I rush back home and throw the door open. Something smells delicious. Amanda! Uh. Amanda runs out of the kitchen and looks slightly disappointed. <laughs> oh man, I was kind of hoping you had gotten kidnapped and I was going to have to come rescue you. No, I uh, made a friend at the bar last night and ended up sleeping over at his place. Where are the Emmas? Yeah. They left a little while ago. Oh, you guys have fun? Yeah, watched some movies, ate snacks, stole a car, you know, usual sleepover stuff. You teens and your larceny. So, this breakfast that's cooking, what's that all about? Well, there's hash browns and eggs and bacon. Oh, yes. Can I? Aww. Yes, you can have some breakfast. Bless you, sweet child. My head throbs. Ugh, I gotta do something about this hangover. Amanda, your loving father might have overdone it last yeah. night. Oh, somebody's hungover. Father of the year. <laughs> You wouldn't happen to have any aspirin or... Yes. I've got just the thing. Hang on. Amanda runs to the fridge and pulls out a jar of pickles. What? Amanda, what? Yes. Drink this. The pickle juice? Ah. Yep. It's what I used once. Uh, I would assume someone would use... I would also assume that it works pretty well. <gasps> She's been drinking. Hmm. You are underage, young lady. Although I've never tried it before and wouldn't try it, obviously. Good answer. Good answer. Who raised you? Amanda Ann. Give her a stern yet resigned side eye. <laughs> I eye her suspiciously. 
I eye the jar of pickles even more suspiciously. This better work. I down a sip of the tart juice. No, no, more than that. Way more than that. I mean, I assume. <laughs> Watch it, you. I drink more pickle juice and help myself to the delicious breakfast that Amanda has graciously allowed me to partake in. After inhaling some hash browns and dunking several pieces of bacon into my runny egg yolk, he knows how to eat bacon. Good man. I'm starting to feel a little bit better. Amanda grabs her backpack and keys. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna get get to class. Don't forget the meeting with Mr. Vega, okay? He said it was important. Love you. I'll be there. Knock him dead, kiddo. <laughs> I always do. We do our secret handshake and she takes off. I got a little work done at home before I glance at my watch and see that it's almost time for the meeting. I hop in the shower, change clothes, and head on my way. Still a little hungover. Well, I think that is a good point to end this one on. We got laid, met a couple dudes, you know. I'd say that's some pretty good dream daddy progress. We got an achievement, bad dad. All in all, uh, that was really fun. I mean, I know, I know this Let's Play probably isn't for everybody, uh, but I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm having a shit ton of fun with this. We're going to keep going. I'm probably going to record one more episode after this, and I'll re release these over the next few days, and uh, then we'll re do some more recording maybe next weekend. Well, I hope you guys are enjoying the series, and if you want to leave me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. It does help the channel grow. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can do that too. If not, that's totally cool, but I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.